In this lesson, I'll show you how to solve a second order differential equation by the Laplace transform. This is question number two in the series. The steps to doing this are outlined right here, steps one through four, and we'll start with number one, which says take the transform of each side of the equation. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's start with the left side. We have the Laplace transform of a second derivative. For that, I will have to use the following. So I'll write down s to the power of two, and this is all for this one, times the Laplace transform of f of t, which is y in our case, because we're using y, minus s times y at zero, and that's equal to one, minus y's first derivative at zero, which is two. We've just finished off the first term, now on to the next, plus the Laplace transform of four times y prime. I'll write down the four out here, and over here I'll write down y prime. We know that the Laplace transform of a first derivative is equal to what you see on your screen here, which is equal to s times the Laplace transform of y minus what y is at zero. So we can replace this, I'll scratch it out, with s times the Laplace transform of y minus y at zero, which is one. Now, on to this one. We have plus five times the Laplace transform of y is equal to the Laplace transform of t, and for that I can just use one over s squared. Let's clean this up a little bit. We have s to the power of two times the Laplace transform of y minus s minus two plus four times these two. So four times s Laplace transform of y minus four plus five times the transform of y is equal to one over s. According to step number two, they say solve for the Laplace transform of y. That being said, I need to group together this term, this term, and this term, and take all the other terms to the other side. The reason for that is I can then factor out the Laplace transform of y. In fact, I'll do that right now. Laplace transform of y, bracket, s squared, plus 4s plus 5 is equal to, and there should be a square here, 1 over s squared plus s, I'm taking this over, and combining minus 2 and minus 4 is minus 6, bringing that over gives me plus 6. Believe it or not, the easy part is done. All I have to do from here is divide both sides by this expression, and if I do that, I end up with the Laplace transform of y is equal to, and I'll rewrite it like this, one over s to the power of two, multiply to this expression, s to the power of two plus four s plus five, and I'll combine these as s plus six all over the same expression. So we have two fractions, and we technically need to match this with some known Laplace transforms found in this table. Although I'll tell you right now, these don't match any of them. So we're kind of in trouble. What I will do is focus on this one, find out what that is, and once I'm done, I'll focus on this one. So I'll call this right here, f at s1. And I'll call this one f at s2. So let's focus on f at s1. What I will do is use partial fraction expansion to break this down into fractions. Here we have a quadratic and we also have a quadratic here. So for every factor that's quadratic, we write down a s plus b, that's for the first one. And for this quadratic, I'll write down c s plus d. I actually have many videos on partial fraction expansion, so I'm not gonna waste time showing you how to do this. Technically, you would have to find a common denominator right now, and by finding a common denominator, you can cross multiply, and then you would have to find out what a, b, c, and d are actually equal to. If you do it correctly, and I encourage you to watch the partial fraction expansion videos that I have, you'll end up with an a value that's equal to negative four over 25, a b value that's equal to one over five, c is equal to positive four over 25, and d is equal to 11 over 25. So you take these values and substitute them where you see the letters. 
The reason why I wrote this out this way is because we actually need to do some more algebraic manipulation for FS1. And it involves this denominator being broken down into vertex form. These two can be matched easily with 5 and 6, given that you manipulate them correctly. But before we take their inverse, I want to continue cleaning this expression up further so that it's easier for us to work with. This term becomes, think about it this way, we have s squared over 1 as a fraction at the bottom, you flip it, and you end up with negative 4 over 25 times s squared. This one becomes plus 1 over 5 s squared, and this one remains the way it is. Interestingly, if you factor out 1 over 25 from each of these, it actually makes it easier for us to work with. Take a look. If I factor out right now 1 over 25 from this term, I end up with 1 over 25 as a common factor. Here we have negative 4 over s squared. Here we have positive 5 over s squared. And for this fraction, you would end up with 4s plus 11 over s squared plus 4s plus 5. Now before I convert these with those that I showed over here, transform 5 and 6, I want to manipulate this a little further, like I mentioned earlier. To go from standard form to vertex form, it's called completing the square. And if you complete the square correctly, you should end up with, instead of this quadratic, s plus 2 raised to the power of 2 plus 1. In addition, if I factor out 4 from both of these terms, I'll end up with 4 on the outside, s plus 11 over 4, and at the bottom, like I mentioned, s plus 2 raised to the power of 2 plus 1. The reason why I did this is because I want to match this with transform 23 and transform 24. Take a look at them. My a value here, according to transform 23 and 24, is equal to 2. And the a value needs to match the a value up here. So I need to somehow put plus 2 in the mix here. That way I can match this with 24. And similarly, if I can make 1 equal to a numerator of 1 as well, I can replace it with the following. Let me show you what I mean. So over here, I'm going to write down plus 2 minus 2. And I'll group together this term and this term, leaving us with 4 bracket s plus 2 plus 11 over 4 minus 2 over the common denominator. 11 over 4 minus 2 is 3 over 4. So I'll scratch this out and write down 3 over 4. And now if I multiply the 4 into each of these terms, this becomes 4s, this becomes 8, and this becomes 3. So we have 4s plus 8 plus 3. Putting brackets around these two, I can now split the denominator into two fractions. Take a look. So I have over here s plus 2 raised to the power of 2 plus 1. And over here I have 3 times 1 over the same denominator. Of course, you can factor out a 4 here to make things easier for you. Now we have perfect matches for these two fractions. Writing out fs1, here's what it looks like. F S1 is equal to 1 over 25, don't forget these two, plus 4 times this fraction, plus this fraction. We still haven't finished FS2 yet. That means we have to figure out what this becomes. We can do what we just did by completing the square for the bottom. And to save space, I will work on the side. fs2 is equal to the following. Completing the square, it's actually the same thing. So this becomes s plus 2 squared plus 1. We want to match it with transform 23 and 24, just like the previous one. And we can do that by adding and subtracting minus 2. Why am I doing that? Because now we have s plus 2 over s plus 2 squared plus 1 at the bottom. And 6 minus 2 is 4 out here over the same denominator. You can pull out that 4 so that we only have a 1 out here. So I'll take this content and place it underneath where I had 
my FS1. And now we can transform each of these terms. But I made a mistake earlier. Back here, this should have been S. So when I divided these two, we should have only had one S. So this should have been minus 4 over S. Because of that, we should end up with minus 4 as its inverse. This should be 5t plus, this should become 4 times e to the power of negative 2t cosine t. This inverses into the following expression, e to the power of negative 2t sine t. We took care of that, that, this one, and this one. This term inverses into e to the power of negative 2t cosine t, and this 4 times e to the power of negative 2t sine t. If you want to simplify this further, and you can, it just requires some more algebraic manipulation, you should end up with y is equal to 1 over 25, bracket 5t minus 4 plus 29 e to the power of negative 2t cosine t plus 103 e to the power of negative 2t sine t. And so there you have it. That is how to solve a second order differential equation by the Laplace transform.